Hi guys and welcome back to SiteEng. This is another video from the site here and uh, as I promised there's gonna be one video a week uh, covering something interesting from the site and in today's video guys I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the concrete and, and I'm gonna also show you the ways how the concrete is delivered on site and how the concrete is then placed on site and at the end of the video guys I'm gonna show you we're gonna cube a few elements and I'm gonna show you how to do it the best way so let's go! So guys, I actually show you this. This is a dry mix here. You use it typically for the drainage uh, and uh, sometimes for the blinding as well. But uh, I really uh, love to use the wet mix for the blinding. And as we for the blinding, guys, uh, I'm going to show you this is a blinding here, laid. So that's the blinding layer. It's typically 50 mil and it's all laid before the structural steel going to come here and the slab going to be poured later. So guys, the concrete comes in the lorries, uh, uh, typically it's uh, seven and a half to eight cubic meters of concrete in the lorry. So our main job actually, guys, is make sure we're gonna cube up the concrete properly so there's not gonna be too much waste on it. So the thing is, uh, I wanna show you today is actually the static pump, uh, how it looks here. So the lorry is coming here on the back, the concrete is being poured into here. And the line is connected so as obviously you can see this is disconnected now is there is no concrete pour today but uh, i want to show you the line this is a very long line here and it goes all to the placing boom which i'm going to have a look in a minute with you guys and maybe quickly just to tell you about uh, cubing concrete guys remember this is a very long line and once your concrete is finished there's actually quite a lot of concrete still in that pipe so you need to add this extra when you're going to be cubing your concrete not to be short in the slab or whatever element you are pouring but let's go have a look at that uh, placing boom so that's the placing boom guys and you can see some nice steel here for the columns lines are marked so cheap is going to start on this probably next week you got the columns here shutters already in it's a quite high columns guys you can see the dockers are five meters long and these columns uh, i can still see the bob bars there on top so it's gonna be nearly five meter column so it's quite a big pressure on the shutter uh, if you talk about the concrete so you see guys uh, the line goes here uh, all the way up to that placing boom and uh, i'll maybe i'll try to jump up uh, to show you how it looks from the top but uh, that's the, how the concrete is placed later and a uh, very useful thing if you got a job like this with a podium in the middle so you can pour all this slab around using this placing boom uh, very useful uh, as you can see here that job is very big uh, the contractor here uh, reddington they are very busy so this is very useful for them obviously what what's being used here as well uh, it's a mobile pumps and i'm going to show you one in a minute here so i'm here on level three i can see nice concrete probably poured yesterday but anyway I just want to show you that placing boom it so you can have a look here from this side uh, looks like that obviously this is opening and then extending uh, to where the pour is required guys So guys, uh, that's the mobile pump. Uh, this one is a huge one. Uh, it's a 65 meters, I believe. Uh, yeah, 65 meters, uh, very big pump. Uh, and the same story with this pump, guys. When you're ordering concrete and using the pump, uh, you need to make sure you're gonna get some extra, like a half a meter or so, depending obviously on the pump size and uh, or on the line length, uh, as I showed you before. So that's the mobile pump, uh, they're using this as well guys, a uh, very big mobile pump uh, and mostly you're going to use the uh, small ones for the pours. Obviously this depends on the range on where you need to pour, uh, that's going to be decision on the what pump to choose. Yeah, I think guys, uh, that will be all about the concrete, uh, I think, on site, uh, that's the ways of distribution of the concrete on site. And I'm going to go now to the office and I'm going to show you guys uh, how to cube up particular elements, uh, how to make sure you're not going to do any mistakes uh, while uh, calculating the concrete for the columns, uh, for the pile caps, and maybe we're going to check uh, one slab as well. Okay guys, so now I'm going to show you how to cube uh, a few elements and uh, I'm going to do one pile cap, uh, I'm going to do the column as well and maybe slab. So let's have a look at this uh, PC3, the pile cap 3, you see the shape, uh, 
we got the level of the top of the pile which is going to be important as we need the height of it uh, to cube it up properly and uh, i got the depth of the pile cup here uh, it's 1400 so we need to know how deep it is and we need the level to what we're going to be pouring this that's important as sometimes we might only pour 1200 or even 900 dependent how it's going to be connected with the slab and what's the actual finish level for pile cup itself so that's the small things guys we need to have a look at and uh, i also got the steel drawing here uh, typically on steel drawing it says a concrete strand but uh, that should be on the ga as well guys and in this case it's C3545 and guys as I said in my structure series uh, I'm going to tell you more about these things about the strength of the concrete and all that stuff all I want to tell you here for now this is the same concrete guys this is C3545 compressive strength of concrete and this is dependent guys on uh, what sample going to be checked as uh, typically on sites you're going to be doing the cubes and uh, this 45 newtons per square millimeters guys this is going to be for cube and 35 newtons per square millimeters guys this is for the cylinder sample so uh, i just quickly maybe put it here guys uh, that's going to be cube and that strength here guys this is a cylindric uh, cylinder uh, sample guys uh, obviously on site as i said you're going to be doing the cubes probably 100 by 100 this here 45 that means uh, strength uh, for the cube which is 150 by 150 and this is a cube you should be checked and because that cubes weighs quite a lot you're probably going to be using 100s and this is recalculated then to give you the cube concrete strength but uh, as i said guys this is the same concrete this, that means for the cylinder that means for the cube and as I said, guys, uh, I will explain definitely more about these things as concrete is a big part of works. And if you're interested in the design and the stuff like this, you're going to find it on my structure series. So, okay, we know the concrete, we know the shape. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to jump on the AutoCAD and I'm going to file one of these pile caps. And I'm going to show you how I cube it, uh, if obviously, if we got the AutoCAD. So uh, that's the simple line. So what I'm going to use, I use a polyline, guys. So I get PL, Enter, and I'm going to go uh, just quickly go around this uh, in this case i'm going to press c to close the polyline and i'm going to press this and i'm going to go to properties now and in the area section it tells me that that's going to be 5.23 meters square uh, i just try to show you this uh, that's here area so guys as i said this is 5.23 meters uh, and we're talking about the area here square meters and uh, as we checked the uh, level here uh, we know that the pile cap going to be poured uh, full height which is 1400 in that case guys the amount of concrete we're going to need uh, going to be our area 5.23 times the depth of it which is 1.4 meter here and uh, that's going to be uh, 1.4 that's going to equal 732 cubic meters so in this case you would probably order a seven and a half meter for this uh, particular pile cap obviously in the pile cap there is a steel and the, the piles themselves that will cut 75 mil above the blinding level but guys when you're ordering concrete obviously you want some extra so uh, i would actually go in this case for 7.5 meter especially this is a groundwork so any extra can be used later in some uh, areas for the blinding and if you're going to be short that's the problem so guys I, i'm going to jump now i'm going to take uh, one column here uh, you can see here this is uh, that was one meter column by 400 uh, here so obviously the area going to be 0 0.4 uh, square meter and now we need the height of the columns and this is guys uh, important here we're going to check the levels as this column going to be going from the basement to the soffit of the ground floor slab and then as i said in one of my video we're going to add maybe 20 mil so guys uh, i got our column here uh, we know the section of the column we know the dimensions as i said obviously we're going to be checking uh, with this drawing as well if this is all correct uh, just double check and once we got the area uh, this has to be multiplied by the height of the element we are pouring uh, so in this case i'm going to get the levels quickly here uh, so we know the slab level is 43015 and now we have to just find the soffit level of the uh, ground floor slab in uh, that area obviously in some cases you're going to have a beams or maybe drop heads and uh, that might be poured uh, just to that level but i'm going to have a quick look at the ground floor with you guys and we're going to sort it out so guys i got the drawing uh, with our column here uh, as you can see I got the slab level here of the ground floor slab and I got the depth of the slab as, as I said we're going to go to the soffit. I just quickly calculate it now here uh, and I'm going to show you how much concrete you would need for this column. Uh, I'll put it here. So as I said this was 0 0.4 square meter and uh, that's going to go times 
our height. So guys, uh, I'm going to put everything here, so that's going to be clear. And if you got any questions, just uh, let me know. Uh, and uh, what I'm doing now, guys, I'm going to take the top of the column. So top of my column is uh, going to be the ground floor slab level, which is 47, 140. Uh, I'm going to take off that uh, 0.6 meter, which is the, as you can see here, that's the slab thickness is 600. This is in millimeters. I'll calculate it in meters as I'm going to be later looking for the meters of concrete. So that's why this is in meters. And I'm going to add here my 20 millimeters here. As I said before, I want my column to be a little bit above the soffit. So once the guy is going to be decking, they're going to decking just up to the column and they're not going to be uh, extra infills needed. So always when you do the columns, you're looking to pour them a little bit above the soffit. Obviously not too high as this later may end up uh, with the break in the concrete. So guys, that level here, this is the top of my columns. So this you can use later when you're going to be pouring the columns. And if you want to give the concrete finishers the deep stick uh, for the pour, that's going to be a level you're looking for. To check the column height, obviously I need to take off the bottom of the column, which is in this case the basement level. And that was 43.015. I close it here uh, just to keep it mathematically right, obviously. So I got guys, the level of my column is 46. Point, uh, 0.560 and I'm going to take off again uh, the 43.015 which is a basement and the height of my column going to be 3 meters 0.545 actually. So guys uh, as you can see I got 0 0.4 square meters times 3.4 so uh, I'll maybe put it here guys uh, times 0 0.4 that's going to equal 1.5 42 cubic meter guys and that's the amount of concrete you would need for this particular column so guys uh, i think i explained this uh, quite well if you got any questions as i said let me know and uh, there's going to be one more element guys i'm going to try to i'm going to do some uh, part of the slab with you and uh, that will be all in terms of uh, cubing up the concrete i was thinking to show you the slab but that's actually going to be the same story as with the pile cap depended on the shape you're just going to go with your poly line all around the slab uh, it depends on the pour obviously you need to know the pores and uh, once your slab going to be just bigger obviously the area going to be bigger and if your slab is 300 600 then you're going to have to multiply it by the depth of the slab and that's going to be your concrete and uh, at the end of the video guys i'm going to actually show you as uh, sometimes the slab because of stop ends and other stuff got irregular shape and i will, sh I will show you at the end of the video how, how your edm can help it and how to use your edm to check the area and then to cube up the concrete just one more thing guys uh, once you got the pile caps here and the big core caps sometimes there is a really loads of steel coming and uh, the big bars and uh, i don't know if you know but 7.85 ton that's the weight of a cubic meter of steel so to make it simple guys let's say you got 78.5 ton of steel coming into your element here that means that's going to be 10 cubic meters of steel guys so if you calculate it as a 300 meters of concrete let's say 300 cubic meters then you can take that 10 meters as this is going to be used by the steel so in the bigger elements when there's the, a load of steel coming guys you need to actually take a little bit off to make it correct but i'm going to go now uh, to show you how to use your edm to make your calculation right so guys uh, as i said uh, the cubing of the concrete is like you just seen but once the pour edge is irregular and it's not easy to do it you can always use the edm and i very recommend it to use it and i'm going to show you program for it which is great uh, and that's going to be in the programs and you're going to press the page here now this is tso6 obviously you're going to find it as well uh, and ts15 but it's very good to know and tso6 uh, got this program as well it's number nine area and volume guys and you press this for this program you just need to level your instrument you don't need to do a resection once you level it if you want to check the area you just uh, do it like this you see the area so we're gonna i'm gonna press continue here uh, let's say point number one i'm gonna turn on the laser here uh, i'm in the office actually now but i'm gonna show you let's have a look i'm gonna shoot the corner you see the laser there and i'm gonna press now uh, measure and the height might be zero doesn't really matter as we looking for the 2d uh, you're going to see it's 2D and 3D. Obviously, we're looking for the 2D area. So I'm going to press measure and uh, I'm going to show you here on the map. You see the point number one is here. Uh, I'm going to press measure again. So that's the line now. And I'm going to put the third point now. And now you can see there is a triangle created now. And uh, you can see the area is 2.2 meter. Once I'm going to shoot somewhere here closer to me, uh, that's going to be more like a square and let's have a look if I'm right 
yes it is and the area is uh, 4.8 meter so obviously once as i said the edge is irregular or something use this program guys it's very useful it's very good and uh instrument tilt yeah obviously you're not going to set in your instrument uh, at the edge of the desk but uh, that's that's the thing guys uh, that's how you want to check the area as well and obviously you're going to calculate your concrete base on the depth of the of the of the pool of the slab or wherever you actually check in the area for so yeah guys uh, thank you again for watching please don't forget to subscribe to my channel guys uh, turn the notification bell as well as there's going to be more and more information coming also please guys don't forget to leave the thumbs up as this is helping to grow this channel and makes more people to see this and is making our engineer family bigger and bigger. So yeah guys, thank you again for watching and see you next time.